In this examination of the hip, we'll follow the basic principles of look, feel, and move. Starting with an examination from behind, you can look for any obvious areas of swelling, erythema, skin changes, surgical scars, or any obvious deformities. With the patient standing, I also recommend looking for any obvious asymmetries or imbalances in alignment of the hip, knee, and ankle and foot. Finally, your inspection is not complete without looking at the patient's gait. Here's an example of an uncompensated Trendelenburg gait. Please see our other videos for an approach to looking at gait. Next, we move on to palpation or feel. Starting anteriorly, I recommend that you palpate over the ASIS to start to get your bearings. Following this, you'll palpate along the inguinal canal to the region in the anterior groin where the true femorosatabular joint lies. This is also the region where you'll find the femoral artery and lymphatics. Finally, palpate over the muscle bellies of the iliopsoas and rectus femoris. As well as you palpate distally, you'll feel the rest of the quadricep muscle group. Next, with your patient in a sideline position, you'll begin by palpating over the pelvic crest. Then palpate along the tensor fascial atom muscle until you reach the point of the greater trochanter. From there, you can palpate distally along the IT band towards the knee. When looking at the greater trochanter, you can have an appreciation for the piriformis muscle attachment. Then you can palpate along the piriformis muscle insertion and posteriorly along the muscle belly while you monitor the patient for any discomfort. Finally, with movement, we'll take the patient through a range of motion. First, with active range of motion, we'll examine the patient's ability to both flex externally and internally rotate their hip. Next, you'll have an observation of the patient's ability to abduct and adduct their hip. Compare side to side to see if there's any obvious asymmetry. Finally, you'll take the patient through a passive range of motion. Compare their active versus their passive range of motion, as this can be a key clue to determine the underlying pathology.